UN back talks on a new constitution for Syria were to resume in Geneva after Swiss health authorities gave the green light despite four delegates testing positive for COVID-19. The discussions aimed at rewriting the war-torn country's constitution were put on hold almost as soon as they started on Monday when the test results came through. UN envoy Jai Peterson, who is moderating the tentative talks between representatives of President Bashar al-Assad's government, the opposition and civil society, has voiced hope they could help pave the way towards a broader political process. The Oxfam charity said the Middle East's 21 billionaires have amassed 63 million US dollars every day since March. A combined bounty doubled the amount needed to repair the damage caused by the Beirut port blast. The region's 21 richest men saw their wealth increase by nearly 10 billion US dollars since the start of the COVID-19 crisis. Oxfam said its figures were the result of a comparison between their net wealth as listed by Forbes on March 18th and on August 16th. An Egyptian government plan to amend the end points of trains coming from the governorate of Upper Egypt in the south has sparked criticism and accusations of discrimination against the population of the region. The Ministry of Transport, which is overseeing the project, defended its work, stressing that it was aimed at reducing congestion at the main station in the centre of Cairo. Egypt's rail network transports 500 million passengers annually and extends across most of the Egyptian governorates. According to security officials, terrorist sleeper cells, which are backed by Iranian militias and receive instructions from Syrian regime forces in Deir Zur province, seek to destabilize the area. The headquarters of the civil council in Bagus town in Deir Zul's eastern countryside was attacked by unidentified gunmen who threw a grenade wounding the building's guard and causing severe material damage. The attack was the second of its kind after unidentified gunmen and motorcycles launched an armed attack on the civil council in Busaira earlier this week, forcing employees to close it. Lebanon's central bank governor Riyad Salameh said Lebanese banks that cannot increase their capital by 20% by the end of February of 2021 will have to get out of the market. Salameh said those leaving would do so by giving their shares to the central bank and deposits would be preserved because there would be no bankruptcy situation. He said he could not speculate how many banks would exit the market. The Canadian Foreign Minister Francois-Philippe Champagne said Canada has offered to join Lebanon's investigation into the massive Beirut port explosion on condition that it is credible and transparent. Lebanese President Michel Aoun initially promised a swift investigation into why tons of the highly explosive ammonium nut rate stored on safely for years detonated on August 4th killing at least 180 people and injuring some 6,000. The Canadian Foreign Minister said after meeting Aoun at Bada Palace that Ottawa was ready to assist under conditions that would be defined. Moscow accused the U.S. military of trying to hinder a Russian patrol in Syria after Washington said U.S. troops had been injured in a collision with a Russian vehicle. The chief of the Russian military's general staff told his U.S. counterpart in a phone call that Russia had warned the U.S.-led international coalition in Syria about the movements of the Russian petrol, Russia's defense ministry said in a statement. Washington has said the incident violated safety protocols agreed with Moscow. French Foreign Minister Jean-Yves Le Drian said that Lebanon risked disappearing due to the inaction of its political elite, 
who needed to quickly implement crucial reforms under a new government. France has been leading diplomatic efforts for almost two years to persuade Lebanon to push through reforms and secure foreign aid needed to offset a financial meltdown. The French presidency said Macron departs in a bid to boost the reconstruction effort but also to look at political issues as Lebanon searches for a new government. French President Emmanuel Macron is set to arrive in Beirut on Monday to participate the next day in a ceremony commemorating the first centenary of the Declaration of Greater Lebanon. He will then hold talks with officials and politicians on reconstruction efforts in the wake of the massive explosion at the Beirut port and the political situation in the country. French sources monitoring the Lebanese situation stated that it was necessary for Macron to succeed in achieving some breakthrough. Turkey has reimposed preventive measures in light of the rapid spread of the coronavirus and infections hitting a record level since mid-June. The Interior Ministry said it was banning certain events and ceremonies in 14 provinces, including the capital Ankara. In a nationwide notice, it said weddings in the 14 provinces would be allowed for up to one hour only, saying celebrations or parties were banned. Turkey accused France of stocking tensions in the eastern Mediterranean where NATO allies Turkey and Greece are locked in a stiff standoff over competing claims of offshore energy exploration rights. The accusation came as European Union foreign ministers were set to meet in Berlin as they tried to persuade EU member Greece and its neighbour Turkey to fall back from the brink of a conflict. The ministers were expected to debate a range of sanctions and other policy options that might convince Turkey to temper its insistence on drilling for energy reserves in disputed parts of the eastern Mediterranean. Saudi Arabia's foreign minister has praised the kingdom's deep ties with Iraq during a meeting with Prime Minister Mustafa al kadhimi in Baghdad. Prince Faisal bin Farhan said that he discussed growing relations between the two countries and common challenges with al kadhimi The Prime Minister was appointed in May after the country was rocked by protests and has promised to deliver reforms. Turkey extended its controversial Mediterranean gas exploration mission and scheduled new navy drills as its raw with Greece and the EU over energy and borders threatened to spiral out of control. The Turkish navy said it was prolonging the stay of the Orak Greece research vessel and the Sukhov Hani warships in waters claimed by Greece by an extra five days to Tuesday. It also announced plans to hold gunnery exercises at the edge of its territorial waters in the northeastern corner of the Mediterranean next Tuesday and Wednesday. Aden's new governor, Ahmed Lemlis, has urged political parties and people in Yemen's port city of Aden to set their differences aside and focus their efforts on helping him to revive state bodies and fix services in the city. Shortly after arriving in Aden, Lamles told reporters that he would work as hard as he could to address the city's thorny issues such as insecurity and crumbling services. Under a power-sharing deal known as the Riyadh Agreement, Yemen's President Abdirabu Mansur Hadi last month appointed Lamles, who is also the Secretary-General of Pro-Independence Southern Transitional Council, Governor of Aden.